I've got five tips today to help you speed up your workflow in D5 and potentially save you hours upon hours. So let's get into it. Basically, the theme of these tips, in my opinion, it's all about templatizing your work and standardizing it. So what I mean by that is in any given ArcVis project, I typically use the same five to 10 materials. You know, this really comes out to, you know, working on the same project type, working with the same, you know, clients, but you really begin to understand their material palette. So why would I remake materials every single time if I know they're going to be using the same things? So I'll give you some examples. So this client, I know they love using white trim everywhere. Okay. So what I would do to save me time is why remake this? I could just go right over here to add to local. And what this does is it doesn't look like it did anything. If you go to assets and you navigate to local, you're going to have a local library of all saved assets. So this right here, this is that white trim. So if I come here in a future project and I left click, it'll go right there. So I do this for all the common materials and you can always get really organized and make new categories. So you could have, you know, a paint category. So I could call this paint. You could have a metal category, a glass category. You know, glass is something every ArcViz project needs, right? So you could do a highly reflective glass, save that out. You could do a translucent glass, you know, for like interior views, right? All you have to do is click this button and it will come right over here. We don't see it here because I'm in that category. So if you go back to all materials and you just right click and you hit move to, you could just choose the category, obviously name it so you could find it in the future, but put everything in a nicely organized folder and you'll be able to find it in the future. Huge time saver. So if you don't want to use your own assets and you really like the D5 material assets, which I totally do, all you have to do is go back to online and the ones you find yourself reusing all the time, hit the little favorite button. Okay. The favorite button is so important because you can actually filter by favorites. So if I click this, any material I use all the time is now favorited and I could just start up a new project, filter by favorite and boom, there you go. Now I can start applying things. Okay. This is yellow birch. I'll apply that. This is normal glass. I'll do that. There's such a huge time saving here that I feel like people don't realize like a lot of this can be repetitive work. There's always going to be glass. There's always going to be paint. There's always going to be some sort of trim, right? Always going to be stainless steel. I go on and on. So the other thing I feel like people don't leverage enough is when it comes to, you know, light setups. So these are environment setups. You can save out presets. So let's say I've dialed in. This is my typical sunny day preset. I use it all the time, right? I don't want to tinker every single time. You know, you should tinker on the sun position, but that's a different story. But the general settings, like the color correction and the HDRI, you don't need to do that every time. All you have to do is right click, create preset, and now it's going to be saved to D5 Studio in my space. Okay. And you can create a different folder. You could have a folder for sunny days, a folder for moody days, you know, that kind of stuff. So if I call this sunny day, and I'm just going to put this in my default folder, I can save the environment and the effects. So that's all your color correction. That's like your vignetting, you know, the color balance, all of that is there. Environment is like your time of day, HDRI and all that. So I'll hit save. And now you'll see, I've got all these different presets. So now I can, you know, bring in a new project. Once I'm ready for rendering, all I have to do is just double click a preset and it will load up those settings that I used. So let me switch here and you can see quick double check, double click. It changes everything. And then if you don't like making your own environment settings, you could go to D5 curated. So this comes directly from the D5 team. They have dozens upon dozens of options. So this varies from like daytime to nighttime to overcast exterior interior. You've got so many different options. So there's no reason not to use this. And it's also a really good way for you to understand how the pros create their own environment settings. So here we've got a really nice HDRI. I can kind of go in here and study all the different settings and it's all editable, right? So it's not like, oh, I imported this and that's it. No, no, no. You could go and edit it. You can tweak it. You know, think of this as just kind of like 
the foundation of your environment settings and it's really up to you to go in there and tweak nothing wrong with that so as you can see here i'm playing with the azimuth the altitude i can basically make it mine and then i can go right click create preset and save it to my project on that note there's a couple things you could do you can also apply to different scenes um, I, i've noticed that a lot of people don't realize that you can actually just copy the parameters and then paste it on another scene so i could just go here and paste it and it will copy those settings over and then if you're doing this you know you're realizing you're you're editing the same exact preset on all these different images you can actually switch to apply to all and that way when you change one scene it changes all of them obviously if you have exterior and interior light setups you probably don't want to do that but if you're just doing exterior why not and it makes them all consistent so just keep in mind you do have that there then the next thing that's really useful is depending on the type of work you do right um you might just want to create a template file for you to just load a model into so let's say for example i'm doing a lot of waterfront work you know this is what the scene looks like so this is not related to the context because this project is located in suburbia there's not a lot of you know houses it's not an urban you know type of project where there's all these different buildings it's literally surrounded by trees right and we're not going to get particular about oh this tree's got to be there these clients don't care about that they care about the waterfront view and they care about you know just some trees in the background so you could let me hide this save out this file with just the trees you know exclude all the stuff that's in here but you could save it out with the terrain the trees and the water so then you load in a new file you drop it in there and then the surrounding context is done you don't need to redo it every single time right so that's really useful so just keep that in mind and then if you want to get really fancy you could just right click the model and you could if it's not live sync you could reload it with a different model so just as an example i'll put it in uh, live sync mode i'll hit yes and then i can do replace from local and then i could just load up a new sketchup scene and then i'm ready to go right so pretty handy trick on um, that way you don't need to keep up placing it here you don't need to remake all this and it's not like it takes that long but think about it if you're spending 10 minutes to an hour doing like the materials the contacts and everything and you do 100 projects a year that's 100 hours i'm just saying it could be it could be a lot of time so use your time wisely and then the last thing i'll put out there i notice that some people if they don't know what to do you know they're they're kind of stuck they go with like the brute force approach to something so if you didn't know about all the pathing tools in d5 right or the scatter tools you know i've i've caught some people you know they're they're going in there they go into their models and they just start placing trees like one by one by one by one by one imagine doing this manually and so my point here is if you feel like you're doing something wrong you should probably take a moment, pause, and just learn, educate yourself, maybe go into the documentation of D5, maybe watch another one of my videos, or join the ArcViz Academy, little plug there. But I'm just saying, like, if you're realizing, like, something doesn't feel right, and it shouldn't take this long, take a step back, do some Googling, don't just work your way, like, through the problem. You know, this, this would drive you nuts if you had to manually do it. So just putting that out there. Anyways, want to keep this one short. This is all about, you know, simplifying your projects, saving you some time by just working smarter. Um, you don't need to work hard all the time. Just work smart. So just a recap, we've got add to local, we've got our presets, we've got favoriting, templatizing an actual template, and then being smart with your time. So anyways, if you like the video, leave a like. And if you have any questions about this and how I do all this kind of like templating work drop a comment i'll get back to you and as always please subscribe helps the channel out see you next time